This is the Concorde, a legendary supersonic passenger aircraft that could fly faster than the speed of sound and cruise at twice the speed of conventional airliners today, traveling at 1,350 miles per hour, fast enough to cross the Atlantic Ocean in just under three and a half hours. The Concorde soared at altitudes of up to 60,000 feet, allowing passengers to see the curvature of the Earth while traveling. Today, we're exploring the unique features of this supersonic airliner and how it works. Let's get into it. The Concorde was born from an ambitious partnership between Britain's BAC and France's Aerospatiale in the 1960s. After a decade of development, the Concorde entered service in 1976, primarily operated by British Airways and Air France. The Concorde stretched 202 feet long, had a wingspan of 84 feet, and stood 40 feet tall. The Concorde's most recognizable feature was its delta wing design, a triangular shape without a separate horizontal stabilizer. The Concorde had to approach the runway at a much steeper angle of around 16 degrees compared to 3 degrees for normal planes. This steep approach was necessary because delta wings only generate sufficient lift at high angles of attack when flying slowly. The Concorde featured a mechanized nose that could drop by 12 and a half degrees to provide the pilot a clear view of the runway during high angle of attack maneuvers. This mechanism had four positions. The top position is a fully retracted position used during supersonic flight. The second position lowers a specialized heat shield visor that protects the cockpit from the intense heat of supersonic travel. The third position is a 5 degree down position used for takeoffs and taxis to improve pilot visibility. And the final setting drops the nose even further into a 12.5 degree position necessary for landing at high angles of attack. The Concorde also had a small tail bumper wheel, not typically used, but designed to protect the rear fuselage and engines during steep takeoff and landing angles. The Concorde's interior layout maximized efficiency in a narrow fuselage while still maintaining luxury. At the front sits the cockpit with four seats, the captain, first officer, flight engineer, and a jump seat for observers or trainers. Behind this is a compact lavatory and galley area, followed by the forward passenger cabin with 40 luxury seats arranged in a 2-2 configuration. Midway through the fuselage are two more lavatories. While the rear section houses an additional 60 passenger seats, at the very back is another galley for meal preparation during the relatively short supersonic journeys. The Concorde's engines are mounted under the wings, four mighty Rolls-Royce Necma Olympus 593 turbojets, some of the most advanced jet engines ever built for supersonic travel. These engines were engineering marvels, each capable of producing a staggering 38,000 pounds of thrust with afterburners engaged. Here's how they worked. Like all jet engines, air is drawn in through the intake, compressed to extremely high pressure by compressor blades, mixed with fuel and ignited in the combustion chamber, then expelled as hot gases to generate thrust. For additional power, especially during takeoff and acceleration to supersonic speeds, Concorde employed afterburners. Extra fuel was sprayed into the hot exhaust stream, igniting a secondary combustion that acted like a rocket stage, boosting thrust and helping the aircraft break the sound barrier. Afterburners increased thrust by 26% creating that dramatic burst of extra thrust needed to push through the sound barrier. This technology, taken from military fighters, was key to reaching supersonic speeds. The Concorde had 13 separate fuel tanks dispersed throughout its delta wings, holding an impressive 119,000 liters of fuel. The Concorde could fly around 7,200 kilometers on a full tank at an incredible speed, but it was extremely fuel hungry, burning about 25,000 liters every hour. These fuel tanks also played a vital role in controlling the plane. As Concorde accelerated toward Mach 2, the center of pressure on its wings, the point where a lift effectively acts, tends to move backward, shifting rearward by up to 1.8 meters. 
While this kind of shift isn't a big deal for slower commercial jets, at supersonic speeds it could create serious control problems. Without compensation, the aircraft could risk a dangerous nosedive. To prevent this, Concorde used a clever fuel management system. As speed increased, fuel was gradually transferred from forward trim tanks to rear trim and collector tanks in the wings. This movement of up to 20 tons of fuel shifted the center of gravity backward, aligning it with the new center of pressure. The result? A perfectly balanced aircraft, even at twice the speed of sound. The Concorde was more than just an airplane. It was a symbol of innovation, elegance, and ambition. It pushed the boundaries of what was possible in commercial aviation, combining advanced engineering with breathtaking speed. Though it retired in 2003, the legacy of the Concorde still captures imaginations today, inspiring a new generation of supersonic flight. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you're notified when I post new content. Stay connected and be part of the journey. Follow Learn from the Base. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot, and I'll see you next time.